Hello and welcome to this course titled Leading with Clarity and Precision as designed and produced by Region 11 Education Service Center. In the previous video, we learned to start class strong and reinforce a specific procedure. In this module, we'll focus on the transition from the very beginning of class to the lesson's first learning activity. The learning activity in the second lesson lab must be a collaborative task which we'll go into more detail in the course titled Student Collaboration. To have an effective transition, we'll need to know how to give effective directions. In this course, you'll learn how to tell students what to do by giving instructions that are specific, concrete, sequential, and observable. Teach Like a Champion 2.0 has a great technique for giving effective directions. You'll want to have your book handy when we read about it later on in the video. This proficiency rubric details how your learning will be assessed. During your 10-minute mini-lesson, you'll need to give at least two directions. One of the directions will need to include a time frame and a trigger word. The directions you give must be specific, sequential, concrete, and observable. For that extra challenge, check students' understanding by selecting a student to repeat the directions. Now that we know our objective, the materials we'll need, and how the learning will come into play during the 10-minute mini-lesson, we're ready to get started. So why are we spending time talking about directions anyways? Well, every single day you'll give directions, and if students aren't clear about exactly what they should be doing, there's a greater chance for off-task behavior. Dave Lamov helps us recognize and categorize these types of behaviors which is super helpful in knowing how you can lead students to be back on track. Take a moment to read pages 417 to 418 in Teach Like a Champion 2.0. While reading, consider how the right kind of directions could positively impact students' behavior. So the first type of off-task behavior is defiance, and this might sound like, I'm not doing that. Out of the three misbehaviors, this is one that can occur even in the presence of effective directions. In the second lesson lab, you won't experience defiance from your sample student audience, as we'll address those type of misbehaviors in a later module. The second type of off-task behavior is incompetence. This might sound like, I can't do that, or a student will be super slow to get started, or even appear disengaged. Incompetence shouldn't be punished. It really just reflects the need for more clarity and that students are looking at you to help them even when they don't outright say it. The good news is that effective directions can help be clear about what to do and how to do it, and that's what this course is all about. The final off-task behavior is opportunism, which may sound like, you didn't say I couldn't do that. This type of behavior really could get under your skin if you're not careful and is best avoided by being as clear and precise as possible. During your 10 minute mini lesson, be crystal clear about what to do when you direct students to work collaboratively. Pause the video now and read more about the four characteristics of what to do on pages 418 to 419 of Teach Like a Champion 2.0. Stop before the title, What to Do 2.0. Effective directions are specific and concrete, meaning they contain actionable steps to execute the task. Instead of saying, do what you're supposed to, say, grab a writing utensil and get started on your do now. Effective directions oftentimes contain small sequential steps to getting back on task or participating in the activity. A non-example would be, quit messing around. We could break this up into sequential specific steps of, John, put your feet under your desk, put your pencil down, and put your eyes on me. Clear and precise directions are also observable, meaning that you could visibly see whether or not students are following along. The non-example, get a partner, can be approved by adding the high five and facing the teacher observables. 
Okay, so we're going to put all of those characteristics together in what we feel like is an example of an effective direction. Students, in just a moment, when I say go, turn to your shoulder partner and discuss the significance of line 27 in today's text. I should see each partner talking, and I should hear conversations that are focused on the discussion prompt. You have 90 seconds on the clock. Ready? Go. Did you notice how we included the trigger word go? Trigger words help students process the entire directions and keep them from starting early and missing a piece of information. We also established a time frame of 90 seconds to complete the task. You'll need to have both a trigger word and a time frame in a set of instructions that you provide during your 10 minute mini lesson. You could see that these parts allow the directions to be clear with specific actions in a sequence. The directions fit the criteria of also being observable because we could see students turning to their shoulder partners and also hear students talking about the discussion prompt. In addition to the criteria of the instructions being specific, concrete, sequential, and observable, Teach Like a Champion 2.0 has other pointers for making directions clear. Scan over pages 419 to 421 to see other bright ideas. Incorporating gestures to your directions is one method that adds that whole nonverbal communication element. Gestures serve well, especially when your students are tracking the speaker. As your expectations become more routine, you can substitute these nonverbal cues for any verbal clarifications you need to make, which ultimately allow you to not have to call out individual students in front of the class. In order to achieve that extra challenge for this module, you'll want to check students' understanding to gauge whether or not your instructions were clear. This might look like, Ava, what line of text will we discuss? And John, how long will you have to discuss with your partner? Okay, ready, go. All right, now that we've established the components of effective directions, let's see them come together in a real life example. Pause this video and locate the YouTube clip of Ms. Buroff leading her students with clarity and precision in your Canvas resources. As you watch, See if you can note whether or not her instructions were specific, concrete, sequential, and observable. Also, be on the lookout for a trigger word and a time frame. I don't know about you, but I was super impressed by Ms. Burroff's directions and how her students were right on cue. Check any notes that you took to the chart on the screen to see if you picked up on all the criteria. Congratulations, you've done it. You've finished the learning for this module and are ready to prepare for the mini lesson. The next few slides will help give a few more tips for being precise and clear with your directions. Throughout the course of the 10 minute mini lesson, you'll need to give at least two sets of directions. One of those directions could be given as you greet students in their doorway as you direct them to do something or get something and go to their seats. Your second set of directions will likely need to tell students what to do in the collaborative learning task, which we'll get into more details in the next module. This will provide a good opportunity to lead students into the task by using the trigger word and the time frame. To prepare for your mini lesson, consider writing the directions down and practice delivering them until you feel confident and no longer need a visual aid. Analyze your directions, just like we did with Ms. Burroff earlier, to make sure they meet the criteria. Choose a trigger word. It can be go, but it doesn't have to be. You can have fun with it and choose a word like pepperoni or even the school's mascot. Check to see if your students understand the directions. If you stumble delivering them or students aren't clear what to do, don't be afraid to rephrase or re-deliver your instructions. Thanks for watching this course module titled Leading with Clarity and Precision.
Good luck and feel free to review this video at any time as you prepare for your upcoming mini lesson. Giving directions seems overly simple at face value, but attention to mastery over delivering them will pay off every single day you teach, maximize instructional time, and diminish opportunities for off-task behavior. Today's video referred to content from Teach Like a Champion 2.0 by Doug Lamov. Images for this presentation were downloaded from Pixabay.